Well, hello, this is Brachytech. I'm here to share my engineering knowledge with you because I want everybody to be a great engineer. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to talk about use case diagrams today. All right, so what are we doing when we're talking about a use case diagram? So this is used in system engineering to illustrate the interactions between a user or an actors in a system or a subsystem. There's four different types of components within a use case diagram. We have an actor, we have a use case, we have a system boundary, and we also have relationships. So actors, they're typically represented as a stick figure inside of the diagram. And these are the actual users that interact with the system being designed. So this can include just the person that's got to use the system. So this can include everybody that's encompassing with that. I'll show you examples when we get there. Now we have use cases. These are typically dictated as an oval. So this specifies action that the system performs in response to an interaction with the actor. Now we have the system boundary. So we want to keep what we're talking about constrained inside of a specific limitations. Because once you go outside that limitations and if you don't constrain it, you can go everywhere. On our example we're going to later, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about here with a system boundary, because it'll be clear once we put this example together. And then everything within the system boundary is your use case. So use cases are held within there. All right, so now we have relationship. So this is connecting your user or your actor with a use case. You can also include and extends verbiage within there that, that branches off and includes a feature or includes or extends a use case. All right, so we're going to have a system boundary and this is a signal intent. In layman's terms, this is a car signal indicator, a blinker turn, a turn blinker. You know, when you turn, make a turn and you push the button, it flashes. Yeah, one of those, a signal blinker. Now we're going to have the system boundary right here, and then we have the operator. So this is the operator that obviously drives the motor vehicle. So he is going to do an action called request turn or he's gonna have a signal request. So he's gonna send a signal request that could be either left or right to the system. Now we will show this interaction with an arrow. There you go. Go straight in there when then we have an operator. Now, when we when he sends a signal request, we want to actuate that. We want to turn on an actual signal. So he requested it. And then within our system, we're going to execute that request as a blinker signal. Now these two systems interact, so these are, this is kind of like, like an include, all right? Let's take this bad boy. And it's, it's going to include, all right? So when, whenever the operator requests the signal, it's going to execute that signal. And then he's going to go through another situation where like, oh, I don't want a signal. I want to cancel my signal request. Believe it or not, I've had driven cars where they totally screw up this part. <laughs> where the cancel signal request doesn't get executed properly and they probably should rethink that. So here we're going to have a cancel signal request and this is also an include let's 
take this arrow and attach it here. All right. Now, when you, when you do these diagrams, always do it in a group. And so that way you can interact and everybody brings something different to the table. You'll have something that you include that you wouldn't have if, if that person wasn't there. So it's good to do these in front of groups. It's good uh, to include quite a few people and, and it just not engineering in general. So among the whole entire operation, you know, you get marketing in here to do this with you. All right. Speaking of marketing, so we're going to extend this blinker signal. So sometimes you have different packages on your vehicle. So you have a deluxe signal. Right here. So this could be an option that, that you get. You're like, hey, I want deluxe blinkers instead of regular blinkers. It's going to make everything look a little bit more fancy. You know, so we're going to go ahead and say this extends It go ahead and extend that signal. All right. What else as an operator do you want? So you want to be able to change out your lights. Or actually, let's say uh, you want a signal request, but you want to make sure that that signal request that you send gets fed back to you and you know that you actually requested. So this is some sort of feedback to the operator where you indicate, oh yeah, hey, you, you made the signal and it's good. And we're going to give you some sort of feedback to let you know that everything is working. So this, this can be both a visual and or an audio feedback mechanism that lets you know everything's good. top of that, let's say you have a light out. So you're using your blinker. You don't think anything's wrong and you're driving down the road. You get pulled over by a cop and he says, oh, hey, look, your blinker's out. What are you doing? Here's a ticket. Go fix it. So what, what can you do when you're designing a system? you can actually inform the operator that his lights are out. That could be a part of your system. So this is a signal failure feedback. They always want you to remain generic with the names on these, so. Because if you don't remain generic, you'll you'll put yourself into a bind, and you <clears throat> might constrain the design of your system. So here we're not trying to constrain this. I'm not saying you're going to use a specific uh, blinker, a specific light, or specific methodology. Not yet. I might, but not yet. So we're going to use generic terms. All right, one last thing. Uh, so we have a signal request, a cancel signal request. We have a blinker signal. We have a deluxe blinker. You know, we have a signal request feedback that lets me know I turned on the signal. And then I have a signal failure feedback. What else can we put in here that the operator might actually want? All right, auxiliary blinkers. 
So you're driving down the road and you see these guys with these trucks and they put aftermarket blinkers on there. So as a design engineer, do you want to include that option on there? So you can include like a driver, like a little high side driver, $2 chip, some wire, and it's already practically done for them. All they have to do is hook it up. You know, you, you take a, a two, three dollar option or two to five dollars, which is going to cost the manufacturer to do this and turn around and sell that for a hundred dollars plus probably even more. I'm sure they'll, and it saves everybody in the long run because they don't have to go down to a mechanic, have them splice in the wires. So we're going to go ahead and extend this. And there you go. So from the user perspective, this is kind of what he wants. Uh, all right, wait, we got one more maintenance. So you've got a broken light, you got to fix it. <laughs> Technically, go by the law, you know, you're at home, the blinker breaks down. <laughs> you can't change the light, you need to call a mechanic, you got to tow it all the way to the mechanic. He's got to fix it. So a, a $20 bill turns into four or $500. You know, if you're designing somebody, something like that, you. Don't want that to happen. So it needs to be easily maintainable and easy to change out. So you don't have to uninstall half your car just to change out your blinker. All right. Now, that's just the operator's perspective. You know, what he might want. Now we have more than just that. So on the road, you have to signal to somebody. And so this is a third party observer, or let's call him a pedestrian. So they have to see your light that you turn it on and be safe when you turn it on. So Obviously they got to see it, but they can't be blinded by it. And so that way they know, Hey, this is the signal intent. So the pedestrian has to actually see the signal. So that's going to feed back into the blinker signal. That's where he cares. He doesn't care that you signaled it or not. He has no control over that. He cares about seeing that, seeing that blinker because it helps making things move a lot smoother. All right, now we have another actor. We will call him Big Daddy or uh, Regulatory. Let's go ahead and use that instead. Now you have standards, you have ISO standards. You have the federal government saying, hey, you have to design it this way. Or you have these constraints, you have to design it by. And so, you know, you have to provide their feedback. So they might tell you, you can only blink it at a one hertz rate at a 50% duty cycle. So what does that mean? That's a constraint on your system that you're designing. So you have to remember that there's regulatory as well within this. Now you're going to have uh, another person. Let This is going to be maintenance. Let's call it maintenance. So this is a mechanic. They've got to know how to diagnose this, the system. And so what, what do they need in order to perform this? So you're going to have some sort of maintenance manual. So he's going to refer to this whenever he has a blinker problem. So is it the wire? 
Is it the uh, is it the wire? Is it the light? You know, is it the actual turn signal? Uh, I need a better, not a maintenance manual, so I need a better term to encompulate everything. So you're going to have also feedback uh, from your actual system as well. So let's just call it maintenance mode and manual. Otherwise, I just add another maintenance mode. So this is this is like your diagnostics, right? You you plug you plug it in, and it it tells you what's wrong. <laughs> so he's he's got this right here, and then he has to actually perform that maintenance as well. So he's got both of those. Finally. Uh, let's see who else do I need all right now we now remember in our definition anybody within the design process that needs to take a look at this so let let's go ahead and say marketing as well marketing so they're going to like this sort of thing when you provide a safe product and so if you do it so good that it's a marketing point, they're going to be ecstatic. So this, this is your signal intent. I'm sure somebody out there can walk through this and say, oh, you missed this, you missed this, you missed this. Probably, I imagine there's a few things I missed on here, but you know, the, the intent of this system or this UK diagram is to capture all these requirements. So if you take a look at what we captured right here, it's it's going to direct your design to do specific things. Like, do you want to provide an auxiliary output for your auxiliary blinkers? Oh, I got, I got one more. Remember what I said about system boundaries and what that entails. Now... You have this new phenomenon that's called automated car. Now this is an actor within the system and you want to constrain what exactly he can and cannot do. So you might want to signal a hundred feet before you make a turn. So here, you're not making that determination on when this automated system is going to signal that intent. All you're doing is you're receiving that request from that automated uh, car on when that signal needs to be turned on. So this is where system boundaries, if you go and don't are not constrained by that system boundary, you can get yourself in trouble because <laughs> now you're you're implementing things beyond what what you should have and it, it helps your design engineers constrain their thinking to one specific boundary so you know you have this automatic car function but you want to keep most of that out of there and all it does is send a signal of intent to the system. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is Bronchi Tech. If you like, hit a like. If you want to subscribe and want to see more engineering content, go ahead and subscribe. I got a Twitter. I probably should post on it a little bit more often, but it's Bronchi Tech. I'll at least let you know when I have a new video out. Have a wonderful day.